Hi, in this video and the one that's to come after it, I want to have a look at microwave ovens and what physics we might learn from them. So in this first one, I'm just going to look at how we might use it as a sort of scientific instrument really. Uh, in fact, we're going to try and measure the speed of light using the microwave and some chocolate digestive biscuits. And then in the follow-up, I'm going to look at some of the things that you definitely don't want to put in a microwave oven and why that is, the science behind it. I'm not entirely sure where we'll end up, but we'll, we'll get somewhere. OK, let's take a look at what we've got here to play with. Uh, in video 7, I talked about the electromagnetic spectrum. And we're going to be focused on using a little bit of that. Now you'll remember perhaps from that video that uh, the visible part of the spectrum is actually quite a narrow uh, band of um, frequencies, um, which run all the way from um, blue at one end to red at the other. Okay, and out this way uh, we get energetic stuff like ultraviolet and x-rays and so on, but it's this side we're interested in. Uh, we move first into infrared radiation, which we can't see, but we know it's there. Uh, we can feel it, in fact, coming off our radiators and heaters and so on, affecting the nerves in our skin. Uh, but if we go beyond that again, then we get into uh, the region that we could describe as being microwave radiation, that part of the electromagnetic spectrum. And in fact, this overlaps with radio waves um, out here as well. OK, now this is quite a broad range. Uh, we're talking about frequencies that vary from something of the order of uh, one gigahertz and it goes all the way out to around about a uh, thousand gigahertz. Now a gigahertz uh, simply means that we've got 10 to the 9 and that is a thousand million so uh, this is a billion cycles per second, oscillations per second. Uh, and we've talked about those, uh, what that means in uh, in a previous video as well. So these are quite uh, quite high frequencies, uh, but um, much much lower than anything, as I say, that we get further out here into ultraviolet and X-rays and so on. But our microwave oven, uh, and they're all pretty much in this area, actually work towards one end of this range, they work at 2.45 gigahertz. And that's actually quite useful for us. Uh, we can do some interesting things with that. But let's look at microwaves uh, a little bit more in general terms before we move on to the specifics. We've established some generic bits and pieces about them here. Um, I suppose the other thing we can say about microwave radiation um, is that it's non-ionizing. And what that means is that it cannot strip parts of atoms, specifically electrons, uh, away from the rest of the atom. So it can't do the sort of damage uh, that ultraviolet does or X-rays or gamma rays. Uh, do. They're, they're, as I say, right out this end uh, of the magnetic spectrum. But what it can do is heat some materials up. Not everything, uh, but it will heat some things up. Um, and the thing that's interesting for us uh, in this particular experiment uh, is that it's quite capable um, of heating and even melting chocolate. And that's the thing we really want to know um, about at the moment. So I've rubbed away what we had before 
the one thing I need to write back up here again, I think, is that the frequency of our microwaves, you'll remember, uh, was 2.5, uh, 45 gigahertz. So 2.45 um, times a billion cycles per second. Okay, so let's um, let's have a look at our microwave oven. Um, I'm going to draw it uh, as a rectangle. My great drawing skills coming into play again. Uh, the key thing to note with our microwave is that there's a whole bunch of electronics and so on in bits and pieces of it. Uh, but the important thing is that we have um, a cavity in here, all right? Um, and this is the space in which our food goes uh, that we're heating up, all right? And the rest of the box, as I say, is filled up with electronics. It's filled up with um, the things that generate microwaves in the first place and then something that pipes them into this box in the middle. All right, so the next thing we need to remember, sorry, this is getting a little bit involved now, if you go back to video six, um, you'll remember, or you can go and look it up, uh, that we covered something called standing waves. And we actually used the vibrations on a string on a guitar in order to illustrate that, uh, if you remember. And what we discovered with standing waves uh, is that we get a couple of waves that are passing through each other and if we get it just right then actually the result resultant wave doesn't seem to move in space so we had within here these points called nodes where we seem to have no uh, no wave motion happening at all. It is, it's just seems to be stationary. But then the opposite of that here and um, here, for instance, uh, these are called antinodes. Right? And that's where all the action is or appears to be. Now these get set up and they get set up in three dimensions inside our little box here. We get uh, standing waves at microwave frequencies. So we get a whole set of nodes and a whole set of antinodes inside our box. And they're in three dimensions now, not just this uh, linear arrangement I've sketched out here. So the upshot of this in a practical sense is that we get most heating around these antinodes, wherever they happen to be in our box, and we get minimum heating where the nodes are. And that's what we're going to use to do our experiment. I need a clean board to show you where this is going. Okay, so the arrangement that we're going to uh, set up here uh, is a whole neat tray uh, and in fact you'll see on the recording that this is actually just a sheet of cardboard with some baking parchment on top uh, with our chocolate digestive biscuits okay now I'd have done it with something slightly better than this um, chocolate buttons would have worked far better because they're smaller and I could pack them into a, a tighter grid uh, on my um, baking parchment. But um, during lockdown, I think getting things like chocolate buttons has proven to be um, nigh on impossible. But I happen to have some chocolate digestive biscuits in the cupboard. They'll do. So we're going to stick this tray in the microwave oven and then run it for a short period of time less than a minute probably and what we'll find is I hope we shall soon find out uh, is that at the nodes we're going to find um, patches of chocolate that will begin to glaze 
it'll be starting to melt. I've no idea where these will occur. I'm just sketching these in now for uh, illustration purposes. But there'll also be areas uh, in here where we're at a node uh, at the level of these digestive biscuits. So somewhere between the antinodes there will be regions uh, that simply don't get a lot of heat at all and those will remain unsoftened areas of chocolate and I suspect it's going to be easier to measure between uh, the nodes than it is the antinodes. Now why is this the measurement that we're going to do? It's because there is a amazingly simple but extremely important equation in physics uh, that tells us that the speed of a wave is equal to its frequency multiplied by its wavelength. Okay, so this is going to be the speed of our microwaves and that's part of the electromagnetic spectrum so that's the speed of light and that speed of light is going to be equal to the frequency which you'll remember uh, is 2.45 times 10 to the 9 Hertz multiplied by whatever we measure to be the wavelength right and we're going to do it by measuring the spacing between the nodes the unmelted chocolate on our digestive biscuits so let's see how that goes well here we are ready to go an old microwave oven i've taken out the um, rotating plate from the bottom because we don't actually want anything to rotate in here uh, and here's our sacrificial experimental probe chocolate digestive biscuits this is how much i love science that i would sacrifice chocolate digestives for an experiment right let's see what we get from this so i'm going to put these on for um, a minute let's see what we've got as a result of that heating well here are our chocolate digestives freshly warmed in the microwave oven um, what we need to do is to measure the distance between either the melted the glazed bits um, or equivalently and actually easier I think is to measure the distance between the um, the bits that are largely untouched so let's take these two at the back here that's 13 centimeters thereabouts um, we could measure also uh, in this direction and actually surprise surprise we get 13 centimeters as well okay we're back from our experiment now our measurement um, and we've got our master equation again remember so the speed of light is its frequency 2.45 times 10 to the 9 in the case of our microwave oven multiplied by the wavelength uh, that we measure inside and the wavelength uh, so let's sketch this out again um, we have this standing wave pattern remember uh, and the wavelength is actually a complete cycle so it's all the way from one node through here to the next node along and what we measured uh, in uh, the microwave oven was some of those and um, actually pretty clearly I've put a text banner on the um, on the film section uh, we measured one of those as well all right and this distance we've measured to be 13 centimeters approximately now this is very approximate 
but we can put this number then straight into the brackets in our equation up here. So what we have then uh, as our sum is 2.45 multiplied by, this is 0.13 of a meter, we've got to keep our units um, consistent, and that all is multiplied by 10 to the power of 9 still. All right, we can put those numbers into our calculator, that's an easy thing to do of course. So here we go, 2.45 uh, multiplied by 0.13 and we need to not forget our 10 to the 9 but anyway this comes out to be, let me get this right, uh, 0.32 times 10 to the 9 and the units we're using here means that this is in meters per second. I'm just going to rewrite this as 3.2 times 10 to the 8 meters per second and I'm going to do that because in most textbooks you'll see the speed of light uh, written as 3 uh, times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So in our very crude experiment, and it is very crude, it's unfortunate that node to node distance is about the same as the diameter of the chocolate biscuits we were using, but in our crude experiment we've got a result for the speed of light that is within 10% of the textbook value. So that's, uh, that's okay, I think we deserve now um, a cup of tea or coffee and one of our warmed up chocolate biscuits. Goodbye.